Hello, and welcome to Harv's World for Episode 5 of the Pacific Northwest, a series I'm calling Born in Idaho. Now, if you remember, at the end of Episode 4, we were just finishing up the harvest on Field 22, bringing in some soybeans. Well, I gathered those beans, finished that harvest off, and grabbed what we had in the silo. Took those over to agro wholesales sold them off and made about 48 grand so that's forty eight thousand dollars and that will cover the cost of our new bail barn so after that I picked up a contract to do some bailing for someone else mowed their grass bailed it up and that contract bought brought in about another nineteen thousand dollars so we're doing pretty well again. We're back up to $119,523, and we're going to move forward with something I mentioned last episode, and that's that's tree planting. I want to get those trees in the ground so they can start growing. Eventually, we'll harvest those and make the money off of them as well. So I came down to the store, and we are going to look at the forestry technology now. There really is only one tree planter. I haven't seen any others. But then again, I'll be honest, I haven't really looked. Regardless, this is what we're going to be using. It's got a leasing cost of thirteen twenty-six. We shouldn't need it for more than an hour, so we can cover that cost. And one tree that we plant should easily cover that cost. So we are going to lease that up here right now. And then we're going to need something to plant, obviously. So we're going to look at the pallets. And we need two pallets of saplings. I think we're going to try to get 40 trees in the ground. Each pallet comes with 20 pieces. So let's buy a couple of those. And it might be time, while we're down here, to upgrade our little fent. Now, I'm loving this tractor. It's done an excellent job for us. But the horsepower requirement for this tree planter is just not quite enough. And I could transfer the planter over to the case, but I think that might be busy elsewhere. And I totally forgot the bale forks. Well, we'll see, or not the bale forks, the uh, pallet forks. Maybe the bale forks will take care of us, we'll find out. We want to customize, and what's, gonna, what's it going to cost us to bump this up to 150? 17,500, I think we've got the money for it. Let's go ahead, and this will make our little fent even more versatile, so we can use it for other jobs. Attach. Now, the real question I've got at the moment is, can I pick up a bale or a, a pallet on these bale forks? We are going to find out. The uh, tree planter will only take one pallet at a time. I want to get two in there, so I just want to see if we can carry one back with us. doesn't look like it wants to do that. Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> it does not like that one single bit. Let's see, get that pallet off me. Well. Apparently that's not going to work. So I guess we'll just have to come back down and get the second pallet when we're ready for it. can load one on the planter to start off with, however. Should be able to anyway. See if I can't pull up just a little bit closer, maybe that's our issue. Well, I'm trying 
trying to fill the tool, but it just isn't accepting it. What's going on? There we go. Okay. So we're going to head back up to the farm. I will see you there, and we will get this, uh, this tree planting started. Okay, so here we are. We're ready to get started. Turn the tree planter on. Let's take a look at our controls. Now, I thought you could change the distance between trees. That might have been a seasons only option. Because I'm not seeing it here, so... We are going to start. We are going to plant right up close to the road. I want to keep these away from the fields as much as possible, so if we need to hire workers, the trees aren't getting in their way. Workers can be a little fickle like that. And it's just as simple as driving down the road. This machine will automatically put these trees in the ground. Like I said, we're going to try to get 40 of them in. I don't know that we've got quite enough room for that. But we'll give it the old college try. Now, I've never done a tree planting before, or at least one that uh, managed to grow up all the way, so I'm not sure how long it's going to take for these to reach full maturity, but when they do, we are going to harvest them up quick, and maybe we'll just replace them. So the line of our property should come right out to this road, oh, this dirt track, I should say go along that as well. Just about, yeah, just about right there would be good. I don't know if we're going to have room for all 40. We've already got 15, 16 in the ground. That takes care of that pallet. That was quick. So it's time to run back down to the store, grab that second pallet. I'm just backing in real close to our, our last uh, sapling. And we will start planting again from here. be hard to see these for the bushes in some cases, but uh, that's okay. Hopefully it won't be long before they'll be big enough that that will no longer be an issue. At some point we'll get around to take pulling all these bushes out, doing some landscaping, and make these fields look a little bit nicer. But for now we are just going to deal with what we have. Getting a little bit closer to this field than I'd like at this point, so we might just stop there. Now yeah, let's do that. Take a look at our map really quickly and see just exactly where the edge is. Yeah, we're right on the edge, so yeah, we're definitely going to stop there. But while we're here, I did want to take a look at some field prices. Now, field 10, not bad. It's about the same size as field 22. That's going to run us 150 grand. Now, this is a big piece of property, but it's really well situated. It has a nice big field on it. It would give us some lumber to pull. But that's going to cost us big time at a, at 321. Now field 21 here, 210. That's a really good size field. That's a possibility. And then we get two smaller, small to mid-sized fields 
off of this at just 183. So something to think about there also. But we are cash poor at the moment at least, so that's not even an option. We're going to need to make some more money. See if we can't get a couple trees in right here. We've got about eight left. There's one. There's one. That'll be good for right now. Yeah, I see. We can go right over here and put in the last five right along this roadside. Okay. Now, all told, that costs us less than four thousand. No, is it two thousand for the a uh, thousand apiece for the pallets, and another what was it about thirteen hundred for the planter? So all told, we're in for about thirty-three hundred, and we should see a nice tidy profit from those trees when they're ready. So we're going to drop this off, quite literally, apparently. Send it back to the store. Once I get in the right menu, at least. There we go. We'll return that. And now, like I said, we need to earn some money. Now, I do want to get our fields taken care of and replanted. But for the moment, there are some contracts out there. They're looking pretty good. And I don't want to miss out on those, so... This one in field 32. Now that's interesting because it pays out 47 grand. It's only 2300 to borrow the equipment. And it's a potato harvest, which I have never done before. And I think uh, a lot of people might avoid because I know they are very time consuming. There's a huge sugar beet harvest here too. Now that would take forever and a day. That's field 33 down, or 30. Wait, which field was that? <laughs> that is field 33. That would take a very long time. Our potato harvest is in field 32. Now that's going to take quite a while also. But it's not as bad as 33. And potatoes are something I just don't see people do a lot. And hey, we're in Idaho, so let's do a potato harvest. Let's give it a shot. I'm going to borrow up those items. Bring this tractor over here. Just park right behind the bale barn. And we'll bop down to the store. Now we've got a big grime potato harvester. The drawback on the potato harvester is that it, it has a very small tank. So it's possible in order to get this contract done, we're just going to need to hire a worker and have that worker run the harvester and then we keep the truck in right beside him. And I don't know what kind of volume we're going to get out of this. Now field 32 is very close to our silo, the, the big port silo there so we can store the potatoes while this is going on so he should the tank should be just big enough that he can keep on harvesting while uh, I go run the spuds over to the, the silo we are gonna find out Okay, so here we're at the field, ready to go. I've got the harvester unfolded. I just turned it on. Let me 
drop the header down now. The front of this is just a mower. It's just going to mow the top leaves off. You can see underneath the cab of the driver, if I lift, that's the actual pickup. It's really interesting to watch these. I've watched a few videos where uh, people are harvesting potatoes. And the amount of soil that they bring up, obviously they need to in order to get the potatoes out of the ground, but the amount of soil that's running up on these conveyors is, is pretty amazing. Now look, we've, we've hardly gone anywhere at all, and this thing is already, already starting to fill up. In fact, I just realized, based on what we're going to need to do here, that I need to keep the pipe, or in this case conveyor, to the outside of this field so that we can get a truck in beside it. If I don't hire a worker and drive the truck myself, this is going to take forever. In fact, that tank is so small, I don't know that I'll have time to get the truck all the way over and back before before a helper is finished filling this thing up. But we'll move along as quick as we can. So I'm going to throw a worker on here and then hop over and grab our, our truck. Now this is not the biggest trailer that I've ever seen. But it's what we have to work with, so... We will do our best to make it work to our advantage. Not sure how close I can pull up without hitting that conveyor. That'll do. This trailer's so tall, it's going to be a real challenge to uh, stay beside him or her. I haven't looked to see who's driving her our harvester right now. So yeah, we're just going to keep plugging along, pulling potatoes out of the ground. Maybe the next time you go to McDonald's, you'll be having some of these potatoes as your french fries. I'll tell you an interesting story about that when we come back.
also if I ever talk about harvesting potatoes again somebody come over here and smack me in the head now I started this harvest it was about 20 after 11 it is now 415 so that took the best part of five hours that's five real-time hours and needless to say this episode has been recorded in multiple parts because I didn't have five real-time hours to uh, to put into harvesting this so regardless I've already delivered two loads of potatoes to the restaurant I have used the silos to uh, store as much as I could the silo down here has 500,000 liters in it it's at max capacity for potatoes I delivered 118,000, so that's 618, and we've got another almost 22. So, needless to say, potatoes produce a lot. And if you can imagine 10,000 liters at a time coming out of the potato harvester, what made it particularly challenging is that it became obvious early on that hiring a worker was just not going to be a financially viable option first of all they're incredibly slow I would imagine putting a worker on this it would have been a seven or eight hour process at least I was able to speed that up by doing it all myself but again it was a very very slow process so at this point we just need to get these potatoes over to the restaurant finish delivering them I would like to find out exactly how much we're going to have left over and unless my calculations have changed at some point we are going to sell our potatoes to the bakery because they are offering a much better price right now. Now I mentioned when this harvest started which was just a few minutes for you a few minutes ago I should say that uh, McDonald's in Idaho had a had a connection and that connection is J.R. Simplot and of course the man known as the founder Ray Kroc. If you don't know who Ray Kroc is he's essentially the guy who stole McDonald's from the McDonald brothers and turned it into a worldwide the worldwide phenomenon that we know today. But J.R. Simplot is basically the potato king of Idaho he is the person who really made Idaho famous for potatoes and in the 1940s he developed and created the first viable frozen french fry so every time you buy a bag of french fries J.R. Simplot is the man you have to thank for that now needless to say because he had created a viable frozen french fry. He and Ray Kroc became fast friends. Ray Kroc was all about um, optimizing operations and J.R. Simplot's frozen french fries at that time became the exclusive supplier for McDonald's restaurants. So in essence McDonald's is the reason that Idaho is famous for potatoes. But Simplot was innovative in other ways. He was the kind of guy who was just constantly looking for new opportunities. He was one of the first potato producers in general to use uh, chemical fertilizers. In fact, he ran a test on his fields when uh, chemical fertilizers were first becoming available. He bought some and spread it on a potato field until he ran out and so it was only partially fertilized and the increased productivity that that fertilizer brought to that field sold him on on using chemical fertilizers so however you feel about those today you know back when they were brand new they were obviously turning the tables for producers of farm products so there's your little bit of Idaho potato history for today. 
I won't bore you with any more details. If you're interested, look up JR Simplot or the Simplot Company. Most everyone in Idaho knows who JR Simplot is, especially southwest Idaho. There's a huge processing plant in Caldwell, which is about 30 miles west of Boise, just before you get to Oregon. I've been there or been by there many, many times. So at this point, luckily we've got a 59,000 liter trailer, so I'll only have to run over to that restaurant about nine more times. Eight more times. Enjoy watching me do this and fast forward. See you in a bit. Okay, so the contract for Field 32 just wrapped up, and I've got about 30, oh, just over 32,000 liters left in the trailer, and we've got well over 100,000 liters of potatoes left in the silo. So even though that was a very, very long bit of work, it looks like it's going to pay off pretty well for us. The contract alone was worth 45000 and we're going to see right now what we can get for these potatoes at the bakery. Now I know I can't pull straight in there with the long trailers, so we're going to have to back across the road. Hopefully traffic will not make our lives too miserable. Get straightened up a little bit here. see if we can't back straight up at some point because that would be nice so 32,000 liters of potatoes selling off and that was 12,000 so we're looking at 
about another 36,000 on top of what we just sold. Let's see, uh, let's see where we get to. Alright, so we made, just off selling the uh, extra potatoes, we made $54,000. I can't complain about that can't complain for one second and we'll take a look at our contract we are looking at forty four thousand seven hundred and eighty three dollars and we will collect on that and be very very happy about it because we are now at a hundred and ninety seven so off that contract we made right at ninety thousand ninety five thousand dollars so yes it was long it was challenging but in the end, I'd say it was probably worth it. Practically doubled our money. I'll take that money and run. So let's grab the cedar here. I think it's down here. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. are full of seeds, but we do not have any more any more dry fertilizer, so I'm going to have to rectify that with our newfound wealth here. Well, not exactly wealth, but you know what I mean. I'll run back down. Run back down to the store. get a worker started on this field. And I said canola. So just pulling back in from the store, as you can see, I picked up a couple pallets of fertilizer. Much, much cheaper than big bags these pallets are. Um, almost, almost half the price of a big bag. Now, one thing I found out is these pallets do not like the pallet forks on this particular tractor, so moving them around properly can be a bit of a challenge. We're just going to slide them right over here in front of the barn so that we can all have a much merrier time. And, as you'll notice, I also picked up a trailer. Surprise, surprise. I realized I wanted to stock up on a little extra fertilizer at this point. We're going to be doing a lot of planting over the coming days, and I knew I was going to need it, but I didn't have any way to haul it. We don't have any kind of a flatbed bale type trailer, so this one seemed to foot the bill for several uses. I can use it for bales, I can use it to haul pallets might pick up a transport job here and there. Um, but it also has ramps, so if I need to move a, a piece of equipment or a vehicle, I can do that as well. And it was uh, just a mere 8500 so I don't want to spend off everything that we just made. 
this actually seemed like something that would be beneficial to the farm immediately. And as you can see, even if I had this pallet on here perfectly, it would still be struggling, simply because Sometimes, most of the time mods are wonderfully beneficial, but sometimes they just don't quite work and play well with others. I don't know what the issue is with the pallets, but... Straighten that up just a little bit. There we go. And our, uh, our worker has stopped because, and this was the reason I went to buy fertilizer to begin with, they ran out of fertilizer, so... And apparently my pallet forks thought they were still on one of those uh, crazy pallets. Wow, that was funky. Okay. And let's take a look at our, our land situation. Again, we've got about 180 at this point. And that's 183. It looks like we're going to need to build up just... Uh, that's 150. That's interesting and very tempting. What do we got on there? Sugar beets. But we can always plow those in. We could just plow the sugar beets in and not worry about it. That's going to cut us back to about 30,000 but we would expand the farm. We could pick up some more contracts. Field 21. No. 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 Oats in uh, field 3. That's not terrible. Where's field 3? Right up here. Something to think about. So... We will keep working on getting the planting done. And this is probably going to end up short. It depends on the editing, but I think it's going to end up pretty short. But we will see you in the next, hopefully, much better episode. You all take care. Bye.